And let's give the Lord Jesus a wonderful round of applause. My dear friends, are you all right? I believe God is going to do a great work here in this service today. I invite you to open up your heart to pay attention to what is going to draw your attention into the true word. Because that, that is the firewood that you will have to cut to put um, uh, in the fire so that it can inflame and boil the water, which will bring you a great, great blessing. This has been our study these last couple of days here when we have learned there in the word of the Lord God in Isaiah 64. When Isaiah wanted the heavens to open up and him to come down, and this has already happened. Jesus has come. The work has already been done. And for me, for you, or for anyone to be blessed here today, we just have to want it in the name of Jesus. But speaking of this blessing, let's watch a person who is blessed in one of my services. Just like today, God will bless you here. Roll this VT. Valdesi, what was the problem in your backbone? I work as a wallpaper hanger, Dr. Suarez, and about 16 years ago, I fell off a ladder when I was hanging wallpaper on an old two-story house. The ladder broke apart and I hit my back on a handrail. And after that, I was never the same man. What was it you couldn't do? I couldn't raise my arm, and now, thank God... How high could you raise them? Well... What about now? Just look. And my wife, and she's right here. <laughs> Come here, man. She had to turn me in bed. She had to turn me in bed. Are you getting emotional? It's true, and me too. Did you have a back pain as well? I did. You couldn't get down. Get down now then. God healed the couple, folks. That is so beautiful. Thank God. Thank it's God. true. Did you have to turn him over in bed? Many times, many times. I would get all we stiff. We were taking a lot of medications to the pain in the back, but now thank God. Never again, in Jesus' I name. I got here thinking about it, that you would pray for back pains. Now I'm healed. And God healed thank you thank too. God. Thank God. Glory yes, to sir. God. Shall we applaud Jesus? And we will applaud him as well, right, folks? <laughs> this has happened in the Church of Guayanazis. What does it really mean? You are very powerful. You do like this with your hands and smoke comes out. No, no, I'm just like you. <laughs> There's no fire coming out of my hands. It is the word of God, which we pray and we agree upon it, and which God wants everybody to know about. You at home, there's someone there with a problem, or maybe at work. God wants all of mankind to understand, and this is not religion. This has nothing to do with religion. This is a higher flight. It is the word of God which takes you to the presence of God and brings the power of God to bless you. And everyone has this absolute right. There isn't anyone who doesn't have the right. This is for whoever believes in the message of the gospel. When we believe in it, we release the power of God. And then God comes into action. God heals, God delivers, God transforms, and he works wonders. And speaking of all of God's blessing, let's watch another person who was blessed. Roll his VT, will you? What has God done for you, Carlos? He blessed me. I received a blessing. I had a back pain for 10 days. For 10 days? I simply couldn't move. I couldn't lay down. I couldn't even move in bed. How about now? I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Is all the pain gone, gone and you can move now? Can you shake it all about? Go on, Carlos. Go on, Carlos of Jesus. <laughs> Today we have got a lot of athletes of Christ here, isn't it, folks? And let's applaud the Lord, right, folks? I'm going to repeat it once again. I will bring you the word in a very short while. Listen to what God is going to speak to your heart. And you must believe in it. And this should be effortless. Jesus said, come to me. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He didn't say, say a powerful pray fast. No, come to him and he will give you rest. And he is powerful enough to do so. Glory to God. My friends, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 14, there is a word here that I'd like to study with you, which will help you, especially if you're that person whose heart God has been touching ever. This thing that you've been doing is not so good. And the person says, God, I will stop it. But they don't. And what will happen to this person? It says the following. The mouth of an, of an adulterous woman is a deep pit. A man who is under the Lord's wrath falls into it. Let's begin it backwards so that we can understand it. Um, why the mouth of an adulterous woman is, is a deep, a deep pit. A man, who, a, a man who is under the Lord's wrath. God is so patient. But there comes a time when God says, enough. I won't be tolerating this type of person. They are inventing things and they're trying to reach God. They scorn what God has said. They don't respect the guidance of the Holy Holy Spirit. 
They say, God, help me out. I want to come before you. God gives them the revelation. They say, no, this is no good. I want another one and another one. But what right do they have to say that God has given them something that was not good? When the person does that and they are under the Lord's wrath, then they will fall into this deep, deep pit. The mouth of an adulterous woman. Adulterous woman here is just a sort of, sort of this thing that God, he has to say. They are the adulterous doctrines. The person who keeps on resisting to what the Holy Spirit says in the Word, they will later on see a right thing in something that is not right. That most weird doctrine which leads you to bigotry, which leads you to do things that the Bible doesn't approve of, that's what the person is going to take on. But why is he speaking this way now? Has he lost the respect for God? Yes, he has a long time ago. This person is under the Lord's God's wrath. He spoke, he taught them, he made the person to understand the absolute truth, but they scorned it. Don't scorn it. You know, whatever God says, you must take it on in the name of Jesus. This is serious stuff. When the person keeps on scorning the guidance of God, one day they will be under God's total wrath and they will fall into, into the weirdest and most bizarre doctrines which will drive them away from the Lord God and which will make the person suffer a lot. And now in the book of Isaiah, we have right here a very important word which will certainly explain exactly or this word is an explanation for this other one for which God used the prophet Isaiah. Chapter 66, verse number 9. Here, God says something for those cowardly people within the faith, those people who, who don't believe in anything at all. He asks the following, Shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery, says the Lord? Shall I who cause delivery shut up the womb, says your God? The womb here is your mind. The person is in a, in a difficult situation. They have never had a, had a place in the sun. They have never prospered. Their family has always been very poor. Everybody has always suffered a lot in life. And then they start to seek out God, and God speaks something important in their hearts. And there are many people who think that is too much for them. Don't do this, my brother. If God spoke something, put it into your heart. I will be what God has said to me. He wouldn't bring me to the time of birth and not cause delivery. Why would he bring to the time of birth if he were not going to cause delivery? Why would he give you a revelation if it were not for you to change your life? I always tell you, tell you, tell you the story about me when I was 11 and I saw television for the first time in Cachoeira de Tepimirim. A cousin of mine, he was in town for the first time. He lived in a nearby town but he had never come there. I had cheap flip-flops on my feet. And, you know, we lived a humble life. And my cousin said this, Cousin, do you know what television is? This cousin of mine is a pastor in Germany. And I told him, but he wasn't. I was the one who evangelized him. I was a servant of Jesus and he wasn't. And I said to him, I don't know it, but I would like to. So we will go out tonight to the Jeromone Monteiro Square because there is a store there which turns on a television set for the poor. I got there, there, there were about a hundred people. I was little, I went through the crowd. I looked at it and I liked it. Just like this, I could even see myself there now. I turned around, kept looking at the people, at everybody. I was a leader in an intermediate class in the church where I congregated. I already followed Jesus. I saw it doing the will of God and everybody was looked like this. And then I thought, Jesus, this television thing is really good. It looks like everybody's hypnotized. Jesus, just look. Eyes wide open like this, open-mouthed. And then it seemed like he talked to me. As if he said, I am looking for someone. He didn't say that. That one day will be talking to me about me because, because I felt it. I said, Jesus, there is no one talking about you on television. Then I stopped a little and I thought, I will make you a promise. We didn't talk, but I pretended to talk to him. If you give me the means one day, I will be there. Anyone who could read my mind then would say, this boy is nuts. His father's a bricklayer. He lives in total poverty, poor thing. How could he possibly one day be on television talking about Jesus? My little brother, this has happened. I kept it for 20 years. Would God open my eyes? 
If it weren't for me to do that, would he bring in the time of birth and not cause delivery? Why has God made you a woman? Because he has done it so you could be a mother. No, I want to be a businesswoman. You may as well be it, but a mother as well. From your womb, a child should be born. I'm not married. Look for someone. God hasn't given me anybody. I guess you have been way too picky. He might have given you what you needed and what you fulfill you, but you didn't understand it in the Lord. So you then, you will fulfill your mission. But I am barren. But he opened your womb, your understanding. He gave it to you. You take hold of the blessing. Sarah did it, Anna did, and Rachel did as well. They all did, and, and they were all mothers. Even the Virgin Mary, with no physical tongue contact with a man, and the Savior was born. My brother, obviously, they won't be the case. He was the only one. But God will do the work. And now coming back to his plan, he gives you a plan. No, but I am a woman. How many women are successful businesswomen? Why not? But I am, uh, you know, my skin color. What color? We are all equal. Either you're black, yellow, red, white. There is no difference. God is the same. He created us. Well, but I'm a fatty. I'm too skinny. This is all talk of the demons. You are whoever God wanted you to be. Take your position. We need someone just like you and a well successful person. And he is saying, shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery? Wake up, says the Lord. Shall I, who caused delivery, so he has given you a blessing, and would he shut up the womb? Is it over? Well, was it just for me to convert? I was a witch. I was of this religion. Now I've come to the gospel, and God stopped working miracles. Oh, really? Do you think that God is a scoundrel, a deceiver? That was the beginning of a cycle that will never end. And you, which you need to believe in, my friend, God hasn't done it to fool you. I will heal him, because if I do, I'll have another one. No, he wants everyone to come to the salvation, so that the person can participate in the happiness. He is not doing an evil thing to anyone. So if he has brought you to the time of birth, he will cause delivery. He will continue causing delivery. I believe God has more to give me while I am here on this earth, and he is using me. I can believe in great things, and he will use me. He is not, absolutely not, going to shut up the womb. The inspiration for you is over. You've already got all of those things. It's enough. No, God is not that being. God is not a man. He's completely almighty in all of his extension, in all of the world, with all of the people and everywhere that where, where you are or that exists in the world. He has created. I have already said this the other day. The earth is inserted in a galaxy called the Milky Way. The experts say there are 100 billion stars here. The Bible says there in Hebrews that he controls everything, upholds everything, sustains everything by his power in his hands. But they say there are 100 billion more galaxies. I don't know how many they got to this number, but it's a lot anyways. Let's say, uh, let's say something we cannot count because there are too many. So he upholds all things. And at the same time, he takes care of me and you. He knows how many hairs we have on our heads, how many have fallen, how many leaves have fallen from a tree, from those forests in the Amazon and all parts of the world. He knows everything at the same time. But he treats me and he treats you as if you were the only people in the world. Personally, as if no one else mattered at the same time. So this almighty God, what is it that he cannot do for you? Shall I, how was it again? Shall I bring to the time of birth? No, God has given me the revelation, but you know I couldn't make it, man. You have failed. You had to consecrate yourself to God. Then you reject all of his entire guidance. And what happens then? Here comes Proverbs uh, 22, verse 14. The mouth of an adulterous woman is a deep pit. You will fall into the strange doctrines. Woman here is a symbol to the doctrines. The mouth of an adulterous woman is a deep pit. A man who is under the Lord's wrath falls into it. My brother, I could have been under the Lord's wrath, but I have told you that very night in Cachoeira de Itapemirim, that you would have a ministry on the television. I began in November the 3rd of 1978 as the first pastor of the gospel to be on the television, speaking the whole message. We shook this country. We have been shaking it. We want to see everyone under the, under the, under the blessing of the Lord. But I, 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 I haven't done that. But he would say, but I told you, I knew because I have touched your heart. But Lord, I was only 11. I wasn't responsible. I was responsible. When I was six years old, he revealed himself to me and I accepted him as my savior. Jeremiah said, Lord God, I am too young. 
Do not say I am too young because as a prophet over nations, I have appointed you. My brother, wake up. You are important to the plan of God, whoever you are. Prepare yourself to serve God. Amen? Now look at me. I want to say a prayer, especially for the hands. Dr. Suarez, my hand is stiff. My finger stretches out, but it, but it doesn't come back, and it's hurting, and I don't know what else. I will pray for the whole body, but especially for the hands. Anybody here has any type of problem in their hands, raise your hands. I want to see you now. Many people stand up. And the others, if anyone has any sort of problem, you can also participate. The prayer is addressed to you too. God is so extremely powerful. He knows exactly how to deal with us as if there was only one single person in the world. But he's dealing with billions. We are 7 billion people. What if it were 70? It would be the same thing. What if it were 700? Same thing. What if it were 7 trillion, 70 trillion, 700 trillion, quadrillion, quintillion, whatever God knows how to deal with all of us now. Bow down your head and close your eyes and prepare yourself now. Father, I go before you now. You who wouldn't bring to the time of birth. Uh, uh, you would bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery. No, God, you bring to the time to birth of cause delivery. You have awakened us to the gospel to change our lives. There is nothing that you cannot do at this moment. And I ask you, come in person, Father, to operate in those lives, pulling out everything that is not any good, healing this person whole, rising this person up now, making them open and close their fingers naturally, make them raise their arms, their legs, make them totally healed, oh God, even if it is the worst cancer, it is bound now in the name of Jesus and it has to come out. All disease, all evil come out in the name of Jesus. And you say, Amen. Look at me now. Don't sit down yet because God is going to heal you. You who couldn't open and close your fingers, check them out now. Can you play the piano? Go on and play the piano now. Open your hands now. Who couldn't do it? Dr. Swadis, first I want to see the hands. My hands were totally healed now. Anyone whose hands were healed, raise your hand to the sky in the name of Jesus because I want to see it. The pain is gone, the evil is gone. What happened there, sister? Well, I have a problem. I have been under surgery on this hand because of the carpal tunnel syndrome, and this, it gets numb. It tangles, and then I lose sensitivity. What about now? For the glory of the Lord Jesus, I take hold of Amen. this Amen, glory to God. This is what I want. You, what was it, my sister? I closed it, my hand would close, and then I had to open it with the other one and it hurt a lot. How about now? Now I can open and close them. <laughs> for how long have you had that problem? I am 77. I have been like this for about 10 years. About 10 years. Glory to God. Anybody else has had their hands healed? Dr. Schwartz, my hands now can open and close. Don't be embarrassed. The person who is ashamed of God, he will be ashamed of them. I prayed for God to heal and he has healed. It's my finger. It was here. I'd like to see now the hand, hand, hand. Go on, worker. What happened to you, sister? Well, I had a problem of arthrosis here in my fingers. And my hand, I could hardly move it like this. Look, and now I already... For how long have you had this problem? Well, I've had it over a year. Oh, glory to God. It was an arthrosis that I had. Is it gone now? Had. It's gone. That I had. You said it right. It's that gone. I had. It's gone down the drain. It's, it's gone, gone down the it's drain. It's gone. It's gone. What happened to you, sister? They were tingling my hands. Uh -huh. And I felt a weight when I tried to do this, a strong pain. What about now? Now I'm not feeling anything. Jesus is My hands beautiful. Are light. You must not be embarrassed. You have to tell what happened, otherwise you'll lose your blessing, you my sister. I have this finger, and when I close my hand, uh. it wouldn't follow suit, and then I had to, to help it, uh. and it hurts what a lot. What about now? Thank God. But that's what God is doing. He wouldn't bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery. He would never say, call to me, if it were not uh, to answer. You up there, what was it? My hand as well. I couldn't do like this. Look. And now I can uh -huh. do it. I was how, even wearing this hand how, protector. How long have you had this? I've had it for three months. Three months? Yes. Amen. Now the others, I don't have time to ask you all, but I'd like you to raise your hand. If you were not healed, don't raise it. There's no liar here, and there are only people who speak the truth. Anyone who was healed of any evil now, raise their hand like this up high. Right. Do the right this with your land in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Shall we applaud Jesus? You may take your seats. 
Sometimes this time is too short, but later when Pastor Jaime prays, you can tell us what happened if you want, but you then but you then have to testify. Imagine that if you were a doctor or, or a physician and I went to see you at your office and you prescribed me an injection. And then and then you came to me and asked me, How about it? Are you okay now? <laughs> you would be crazy. Either you were healed or you were not. But then I knew you were. I am before a lot of colleagues uh, and, um, and I was healed, let's say, and you are before a lot of your pairs. There are about 20 doctors. And you say, Mr. Suarez, come here and tell us how the injection worked. Mm, I don't know. Mm, I guess he is worse because now he's gone crazy. <laughs> You've got to tell the truth. And speaking of telling the truth, let's now go to the real life drama, shall we? Mrs. Elena has known Jesus for 25 years, but before that, the life of this servant of the Lord was dedicated to the evil spirits. There's nothing good there. We think we're so great, but that's not true. Everything's wrong, you know? My mother took me with her when I was very little. I remember when she went there. My mother was also a psychic. We don't realize that we are disturbed, that the devil is pestering everyone, shuffling everything. I had a son who drank a lot. And the more I went there, the more he drank. The devil gives it to us, but he takes it away. When he sees we are happy, he interferes in our lives and takes it all away. And he leaves us in dire straits. He makes you hit bottom. The encounter with Christ happens thanks to the appeal of one of her daughter-in-laws. And then it started a beautiful story of faith and devotion of this church worker, who for 18 years had been congregating in the Grace of God Church of Navidad. One day, one of my daughters-in-law came to me and said, Elena, leave that alone. Go to church. When Dr. Suarez came here, when his people came here, when they were to open a church here, it was in the square, and I was waiting for them. I was because I have heard that they had rented, rented a salon over there, and I was waiting for them. And when the truck went by with the chairs, I was already inside the salon. <laughs> I was the first church worker, you know? And then came another one, and another one, and she another She never misses one. it. If there's a service in the morning, she goes. If there is one at 2 p.m., she goes. In the evening, she goes. She says that she is the one who needs God. That is what she says. I am the one who needs God. <laughs> and you know, she is 85 years old, but she is faithful in the way of God. What we are today in the family, we owe it all to her. Her knees, I believe they have corns, because she prays a lot for us to see us on the way of the Lord. The joys multiply in the family. The understanding of the Word had another special chapter 10 years ago when Elena decided to sponsor the work of God. And then I started to sponsor my son, and if God helps me, if I have more money, I will keep on sponsoring. Today I am, you know, I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to say about Jesus, you know. Jesus is so wonderful that I don't know. His reward, I don't know where I would put him today. And then when I saw that things had to be the way she wanted it to be, I started to sponsor myself, you know? Her son, Georgie, was greatly blessed. And I tried back and forth to get my retirement. They denied, they denied, they denied. And she would say, you should be a sponsor, you should be a sponsor. And then I said, okay, but she was paying without no one knowing. And then I felt it, I needed to retire. And just after 30 days, they started paying my retirement. I don't like anything. Jesus opens the doors. I don't buy anything without first asking God to see how I will go, where I will buy. Because many times you take the money the way you want, in a sloppy way, and you spend all your money in something you don't need. Many times what you need, you don't buy. And with God, it isn't so. You must love, you know, the work of God. I feel so good when I am. I feel the presence of God. I don't know. Jesus for me is everything. Jesus is the one who gives her strength. And sometimes it seems like she's younger than me. Sometimes I'm worn out and she's still walking up and down and she's full of energy. It's something extraordinary. I don't, she is a role model, a role model. My mother is a role model. My joy is to serve God. There's nothing else. I have no other goal in life. What a, what a joy, isn't it folks? <laughs> Such a kind lady, this Miss Elena from Naveriai, firm in the faith. May God make all people be like this, 85 years old, there in the presence of God. 
She doesn't want to retire from the faith. She wants more of God. I need God. And her son said, this is the right way. And let's hear the first question, shall we? Dr. Suarez, has the gift of tongues been used as the Bible teaches us? Well, sometimes it has actually been overused too much. Why shouldn't we speak in tongues for a very long time? You may speak all day long, all night long if you want to, but not to show it off to other people. Sometimes we pastors get inspired and they forget that there are people who don't even know this part of the Christian doctrine. And they say that is a lot of loan words and nobody understands a thing. Paul said, and her question is about this, we should speak in tongues, but with an interpreter. If there isn't an interpreter, we shouldn't speak. How am I going to interpret it if the tongue is from the angels? I haven't studied it. But when a person speaks by inspiration, the other one interprets by inspiration. But those are gifts from God. But amongst other saved ones, everyone here in a Lord's Supper service, everyone, there is absolutely no problem in speaking about it. Although I should say I have a case in my ministry. I was in Rio de Janeiro in Madureira. That was 20 or 25 years ago. It was in a Friday evening. I was preaching, the church was already full, and then I collected the offerings. And when the workers were passing by me with the bags, I said, put them all inside of one single bag. And so they did, the offerings. And I said, give it here. I'm going to bless it. When I raised it, God used me in his tongues. And I did, 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 did. and that was it, folks. I didn't understand anything. God knows what I said. And I gave it to them to deliver it to the accounting department. And later a pastor came to me and said, Dr. Schwartz, I was going to give up the ministry that day. He said, God, I'm going to the church today to say goodbye. I was back there standing up and you took the bag and said to me, I have called you in tongues. And he, and he gave me the interpretation. I have called you to the ministry and you have no right to deny my calling. I did not know I had said that. He said, I cried my eyes out and I will stay firm. He continues firm to this day. So there are some mysteries of God. Shall we stand up, folks? I will pray for those who are at home. Just like God started to operate, he will operate a lot now. Bow your head and close your eyes, Father. This prayer is done first off in favor of those people who are at home with any type of problem, any need. Send us your power, stretch out your entire hands, heal, deliver, transform, and modify. It is destroyed, this evil that is in this person, in the name of the Lord Jesus. 